it's Graham here at Crashdown, and today I'm going to take you through how to factory reset your Microsoft Teams room. So I'm using Crestron Flex Generation 2 hardware, and simply I just need a keyboard to do this. And when I boot up, I press F8 and I'm able to access that factory image. So if you need to factory reset, wipe everything that was on the system before and have a fresh out of the box experience, you can do that with a keyboard. There is another way where you can do that by downloading the Crestron image and then applying that to a memory stick and then putting that into the system. Other vendors have the same process, but hey, having that image on board makes it much easier. The whole process takes around 25 minutes. I will speed up elements of this video so you don't have to sit there and watch that. But the whole end-to-end -end process is around that time. Then some Windows updates at the end to get it fully patched and ready for production. So let me know your thoughts later on in the comments. And any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks very much. Here we have the front of room display for our Crestron Mercury Mini MM30 Microsoft Teams room. Let's say we want to factory reset this. You could walk up to the device with a memory stick, plug it in and re-image it. And that will come back out to the out of box experience. However, why don't we reboot the system? So I'm just gonna to go to more, restart system. And what you'll need for this step is a keyboard attached to the system. Now I've got a keyboard here, plugged in, it's got a USB dongle and it's paired. You could utilize something like a foldable keyboard. I'll put a uh, description of that in the comments. However, when it reboots, you press F8. So when it comes to the BIOS screen, you want to press F8, so you'll get a menu option come up. There we go. We want to choose the UEFI OS partition. And we say OK. As you can see, it's starting Windows. So it's getting into a special boot mode of Windows. And it's now saying, um, you have some options here. Would you like to go to a backup option? Would you like to go to a restore? Or would you like to do nothing? And we want to do a restore, so we will hit the R key and enter. And now this is quickly formatting the drive, as you can see here. There you go, drive is formatted. It's now formatting the, um, the other partition. So it's 1635 uh, when I'm recording this, so let's see how long it takes. So now it's re-imaging the system. So this is the same process as if you had a memory stick. So if you had a USB recovery key that you've downloaded the image uh, from Crestron on, you could do it that way. However, you go to site, you can't access the um, compute because it's behind a screen. If you can get a keyboard connection to the device, then you can easily do it this way. Now, this is only available on the Generation 2 Crestron Flex system. So they are the uh, systems with the Asus NUC. Uh, the first generation had an Intel NUC. For the Intel NUCs, you will still need to use a USB recovery key. But for the new generation, you can utilize this F8 recovery method. As you can see, it's been two minutes. Okay, so there we have eight minutes to image the Microsoft Teams partition that is on this device. Sixteen fifty, and it's now just double checking the installation, and there we have it. So within fifteen minutes, we press enter. We have now re-imaged the. PC back to the out of box factory state. So this could be useful if you're doing proof of concepts or demos and you want to erase everything that a previous customer had. You can just do a reset device to clear the sign out information, but this will clearly format that disk and start again from scratch. So now it's gonna do this out of box state, so it's gonna get Windows ready for everything. So don't forget, you're gonna to have to do a Windows update again. This image was built on a certain build of, of Windows, so for example, we are in early July. Once the MTR app gets updated to uh, 4.8.31, then you have Windows 20H2 available to you. So that can be deployed and get updated. So that's one thing we'll do is run a Windows update once we're fully up and running. So now we get the out of box experience and we can choose our languages. So again, if you had a touch screen, you could do this. But uh, I've got my keyboard and I've also got my mouse, so I can select this nice and easily.
So now you can see it's starting the Microsoft Teams Room application. And the MM30 uh, Center Room console has now paired and that's got the same logo loading. And there we have it. It's now ready to do the out of box experience on the touch console. And that's taken 25 minutes exactly. So if we head over here, we can see the touch console ready for that out of box experience where we can configure everything again. So all in all, a nice easy process without having any memory sticks. You can just walk up to the device, insert a keyboard and reset this back to that out of box status. That's the Crestron Flex uh, Generation 2, so the Asus Nooks that are able then to be recovered with a simple keyboard process. So now we have our system up and running and what we can do is see what version we are running on this refreshed image. So I'm gonna tap over here and we go to more and we go to settings and we enter our super secure password. That's the default of SFB. And you can see we're running 4.5 37.0 now we know 4.8.31 is general availability as of the 5th of july that's when i'm recording this video so how do we get this to update well we can leave it overnight and it will get its update however if you're called mr impatient like myself then what we can do is run a manual update so we'll hit the window settings on here now you might be wondering how I'm doing this, uh, looking at my device and, and seeing the touch panel, seeing the front of room display. I'm actually using NDI tools and I'll do a video on that shortly, how I achieve this on here. It's just nice for demos and mock-ups to do that uh, on these systems. So I'm now going to sign in as administrator on the desktop. Of course, you don't see every single screenshot. So now we're signed in. This is now refreshed. So the first thing we have to do is download the uh, latest script of the file. Now, this is available on the uh, Microsoft website, so we can open up a browser. I have to pick the right one. And we want to head to uh, the Microsoft website to manually update this. Now, this is located on what we call the doc site from Microsoft. So let's go full screen on that. We want to head to the uh, download the offline app script update. Now, this is located at go.microsoft.com forward slash fw link. And I'll put a link to this in the, ch in the uh, comments below forward slash question mark. And as you can see down the bottom, it's asking me, do I want to save it? So we'll go ahead and save. So I don't even need to visit the website. We'll download this. It's 414 meg as of today uh, for this uh, download page. So once this comes down, what we want to do is um, switch to admin mode. Now, I should have done this first time around. And that is, you have to run this script whilst the Skype user account is logged in. Now, it doesn't say this on the documentation site. What you do to achieve this is actually press the Windows key five times. So five times, it will then bring you to fast user switching mode, and then you can sign in as administrator. So I should have done that first. That would have been that the first step would have been a little bit easier. I wanted to sign back out. So once this is downloaded, we will sign back in, but we'll keep the Skype account signed in. Once that's downloading, there's also uh, an interesting blog that some, some person wrote that actually tells you uh, this step-by-step -step process for um, updating it manually as well. So you can come in here and search for manual. And then what we'll see is the number one result manually update with uh, PowerShell. So again, how to update it is, is listed here. And I take you through on a video here as well. Uh, so this is really just duplication of it. It's the same settings, same process as, as this one here. But this is just a continuation of obviously factory resetting the, the Microsoft Teams room and then bringing it back up to date. So that is now downloaded. It's just running a security scan. Remember, Teams Rooms already have Windows Defender built in, so it's checking that everything is good. And that is now downloaded, so we can exit from here. And we can click on Start, and then go to Sign Out. What I'll do is then sign in on the Skype side, so we'll have the, the Center of Room console back to normal. And we'll be able to simply press the window key five times. So sign in as Skype, 
Now, I don't know how many times I'm going to remind you. It's five times. That is the key to do that fast user switching mode. But this is for any brand of Microsoft Teams room, not just for Crestron. This is built into the Windows uh, platform. Signing in here. And uh, once this is done, we will then press the Windows key five times. Again, so you leave that keyboard plugged in. Once you've done that re-image and you've F8, uh, F8 and, and booted it up, you don't need to wait for it to sign in. One, two, three, four, five. Then you can see it's timed out. And I've now got on the touch panel, um, I want to sign in on the admin account. So I shall do that. So now we've signed in and the Skype user signed in, what we can do now is run a PowerShell command and that must be elevated. So we must run an elevated command prompt. We can go down to Windows System, Command Prompt, and we can right click, go to More, and run as administrator. And we'll get a little pop up. Do you want to definitely run this? Of course we do. So, yes. What we want to do is run a PowerShell script. And again, I'll put this in the description below PowerShell uh, dash execution policy unrestricted and where the script is. So let's just type that in now PowerShell. And then where we have our downloaded file. So what we can do is obviously we open our little bracket. We can tab through looking for that file. So MTR update and I hit enter. As long as my spelling's okay. Let's zoom that back in. So now what this is doing is loading that file. Remember it's 414 meg. So it's going to run this and there's a problem. And that problem is I can't spell. We'll just up arrow and uh, we'll quickly spell restricted correctly. Devil's in the detail. Sometimes it's not easy to spot these errors. Again, you can cut and paste the PowerShell command from the website that I'm going to link to, just so you don't get that wrong. But obviously, you'll need to know your location of the downloaded file. So now it's asking us, obviously, are you running the script? Of course, we want to run this. So we'll select R for run once. So again, if you did this whilst or signed out of the Skype account, it would fail. So you have to do this during the system while it's on as well. So now it's deploying the new Microsoft Teams room, uh, Skype room system. It's still, still called Skype room system, don't worry. It's Microsoft Teams room. Uh, I guess it's a lot of work behind the scenes to change it from Skype to Teams. So which is why the, the engineering team at Microsoft have left it as this. It functions as a Teams room system. As you can see here, it says it's impersonating the user uh, MM30 dash T backslash Skype. So it's it's registering the application as a Skype user um, because that's where it's installed in that context. So it's now checked everything and it's all OK. Going to do a little cleanup operation. There we are. It is done. Skype status OK. As always, once you've done a, an install or an update, I would always do a reboot on here. So Let's do a restart and we'll see when it signs back in. About two minutes for a reboot. And uh, again, when an app starts or uh, is reinstalled, the first time it starts up, it will take a little bit longer because that's going to deploy some uh, and update some scripts in the background. Don't worry if it doesn't come up straight away and you see your front of room and your center of room console, it could take maybe 10, 15 minutes sometimes during these deployments. Uh, is what I've seen. Uh, so yeah, don't worry. Don't freak out if it hasn't uh, updated, which is why you update out of hours. You don't update during office hours. It's starting the Microsoft Teams room application now. And there we have the center room console come up. It's now signed into Teams. And whilst that's doing that, we can quickly check go to settings. We can see we're on 4.8.31. So very good. All done, dusted, updated for the Microsoft Teams app. Now that lets me upgrade to the newer version of Windows, which is why I would say upgrade the Microsoft Teams Room app always. Another thing I've seen from some people is that it can't sign in at all. So again, it could be another uh, vendor's device. It could be a different older version than what? Uh, 4537. If you have an earlier image, sometimes it will be obviously an earlier um, Microsoft Teams new application and it actually won't sign into uh, the service. So again, update the Teams Room app first, then do your Windows updates. The other thing I want to check, so after obviously we've re-imaged the system, we want to make sure we've got uh, our cancel set up all well. Do you want third party join? Of course, we want to enable that. So this is for guest join access for Zoom and WebEx. So we want to have that enabled. Obviously, we can have uh, that set up there. We go to our peripherals. And again, just make sure that we have these set up correctly. 
and you make sure they work. So I just have to set the default speaker now. Away we go. So if we wanted to change our theme, we could do that in here nicely. That's nice and easy to change straight away. You can see it updates in the background. We'll put back a custom theme on there. So we're going to save that now. So this is all ready to rock and roll. So there we have the Microsoft Teams room fully updated now. Uh, it's going to reboot now because I've enabled uh, WebEx and Zoom guest join access. That's why it's rebooting here. The next step is let's go into the uh, Windows uh, settings and let's check for updates manually. Now, you could leave this device to let it run its update in five hours time. So at 2 a.m. in the morning, it always goes and does a check for any updates. It will then bring down those updates over a few nights and then deploy them. However, Mr. Impatient here, I want to have the system up and running. So I'm going to run Windows Update manually on these devices. So now it's starting up again. So now let's go to the Windows settings. So we're in the Windows desktop and let's now bring up the Windows settings. I'll do this on the large screen and it decides to put it over there. Thank you very much. So let's bring that over here. So what we want to be able to do is go into uh, Windows Update and Security. What it's asking us, do we want to uh, check for updates? We should do that. So you may have to come in here and do this a few times to get all the updates, make sure it's fully patched and ready to go. So as you can see, the active hours are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we'll not do any updates during that time. So they will always be reserved to obviously do these updates out of hours and it'll do it at that 2 a.m. reboot. And one thing I notice here is there is now the, the Crash Run package. This is uh, package 705. So this is the latest build from Crash Run that allows all Crash Run computes to utilize the same Crash Run package. And what is this Crash Run package? This is the application that helps you do the, that pan tilt zoom application if you want to control your camera uh, and auto framing but then if you have full room control from Crestron it enables it talking to the, the Crestron processor for there as well so this is uh, built into the into the uh, image so because we Im re image this from a Crestron build obviously that's always included so nothing else to in install or manage it's rolled down from Windows Update so every time we release a new version uh, that brings it through so for example it's also allows any ASUS system to be dual screen. Uh, some of the first batches were not dual screen and the software unlocks it. And it also enables TPM. So if you're using say the Microsoft Teams Room Premium uh, service, that requires TPM to be turned on in the BIOS, this package turns it on for you. So there's nothing else exciting to watch <laughs> for this to do it. It's gonna do its updates, it's going to reboot, um, and that's it. It's ready to go into production and ready to rock and roll. Now, even without doing Windows Update, the system is back up and running, it's commissioned. As you saw there on 4.5.37, it was signing in, it was happy. But before, really, I would always make sure the Teams app is up to date so you're getting all the new features, such as raise hand and all those sorts of uh, inclusive tools when you're working in the meeting room. So the Windows update could always wait a little bit later uh, and you could leave that to manually update uh, overnight. But I would always recommend getting that Teams Room app updated as well. So thanks very much for watching my video and hope that you found that useful. So I hate this, but others do it. So I feel I have to do it. Like and subscribe, hit the bell and you'll get alerts for all my new great content that I'm uh, doing and, you know, great information on Microsoft Teams Rooms and devices. Thanks very much.